does that, does that work for you as well? Because I mean, like, you could look at it rationally. This guy has one staff of the year. <laughs> every, every, virtually everything you, every errand you send this guy on, he's it's productive do it. enough. And he does his job. But then you find out that all that while as well, this other thing was happening with your resources. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 I have to take it as an, indivi an individual basis. Yeah. So whatever I'm going to say now is not like something that can be used generally and yeah. say, okay, yeah, this is what it... For that particular staff, because first of all, we live in a country where it's difficult to find good staff. All right, so sending away a good staff because he did something that I lost money, but I didn't really feel I lost money okay. with him doing. I mean, if we can have that conversation, I, I don't want to lose a good staff because it's going to be difficult to replace. So I might consider that in this case. However, if this is indicative, maybe like this is just the beginning of the kind of worms that's coming out about this, my excellent superstar, whom I didn't know has been into so many nefarious things within my <laughs> company, then then he has to, he's on his way out. So wow. it's like on a case by okay. case. <laughs> yeah. Don't use your bosses. <laughs> but is, is, do you think it's really a money issue? Uh, is it a generational issue? Because I started out talking about it being millennials. And I know a lot of our parents were not necessarily mm -hmm. this way. They had their job, they went to work, and they came home most yeah. of the time. Um, these days, you find, is, it, is it a money issue? Is it a passion issue? Are we just all taking the wrong jobs while we're still trying to find out what we're really good at? What is it exactly? I think it's a money issue, honestly. Because... Having a side hustle is a lot of work, yeah. right? So I don't know that if if you were being paid really, really well at your job and all your extra time is spent creating memories and doing things that you actually love, then I don't know that there's anyone that wants to work two, three, four jobs, right? But we need those jobs. Yeah. We need the extra income. And it's the society that we live in. At parents' time, you know, you got out of school, you had a great job, you, you know, I know you were given a car, maybe a house, whatever it was, right? And then you knew that when you're working here, your, your job is safe for 20, 30 years. Now, man, after two weeks, <laughs> you're going to be like, bye. <laughs> two weeks. Yeah. 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 No, but anyway, like, I, I, you do what you love. Right. Right. You are, you, are, you, are, you are enjoying your job. Yes. But let's assume you came out of school, you couldn't start setting up this business immediately, right. and you had to be like a banker, for example. Mm -hmm. And even if you were paid great, you would still want to do this, wouldn't you? Yeah. So then, is that a money issue? <laughs> I'll save my money from the bank and then quit. I just you wouldn't be doing it alongside. I won't do it along. Well, I think because what I do, you really it can't be a side hustle. Yeah. It's a full time, like all your effort type of job. But I mean, if it was something where it was just my brain at the end of the day, then no problem. Yeah. But yeah. You think it's a money issue? Um, or it's a passion issue. So I or just restless. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I will I will swing more towards the passion issue. Depends on the age of the people. Um, for the much younger ones, I think it's more like a passion issue, because the the their need for money is not immense. Some of them is their very first job, or maybe right after school after two years, they're still excited to get that salary. So and that salary is still still good for them. So later on, if this later on maybe becomes a money issue, but. I think it's like for creative expression. It's just like something that they love to do. And that's why I allow the people in my company to do it. Because even I, doing my work, I need some distraction from time to time. I could go on to a friend's business and we could talk about his own company and everything that he's doing. And I could like help him bring up ideas of what he could do better and actually help him do one or two things in his company. I, can, I do that now to distract myself from the really serious work of strategy and training. Yeah. And I think that for them, they, would, they could use that creative distraction. Now it's an experiment also in progression. Okay, so you might interview me in the next two, three years and I'll say, <laughs> no. bad idea. <laughs> Don't do it. Yeah. All right. So but I'm hoping I'm hoping not. So, but yeah. it's for the creative expression that I, I, I still permit it. So I think it's more of a passion issue than a money issue for a particular people at a particular age. What age? Um, let me say yeah, younger people, maybe say those fresh below the age of, of twenty five, fresh out of school, yeah. below the age of twenty five, twenty four. You know, just, they just want to do many things. Yeah. But by the time they get older and they now pay their own rent and then they have to maintain <laughs> their own cars and then you're still paying them X, Y, Z money that you've been paying them since two years that you haven't increased because you can't increase because of inflation and the actual money that you're making is actually less than what you're making, <laughs> what you were making before. You can't increase the salary, so they, they need a side hustle and then it's a money thing. Okay. And, and at that time, it's, it's a conversation that they can have with you. All right, we're gonna we're gonna take a break. Uh, when we come back, we'll try and find out find out ways uh, <laughs> to work around this. I don't know. I don't know. Um, for someone like you, who you're not a fan of it, I don't know how I, how <laughs> what we're gonna be getting from you. But we're just gonna find out what uh, we can do as a side hustle. 
and uh, make it well. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're talking about the side hustle and the legality of it. I have here with me two employers of labor, so they should know quite a bit about staff having side hustles. Um, what's a good way to go about it? I, was, I, was, I said I was going to ask before we went to the break. What's a good way to go about having a side hustle, if at all? Okay. So we manufacture skincare products. So what I do is I will get interns who want to be in that line or I'll get people who want to be in that line. So as long as you declare, then we know how to place you, okay. right? So if you're ever going to be in the factory producing or dealing with recipes and you're going to my competition down the line, come on, that's not going to happen, <laughs> right? But I don't mind grooming you so that you know how to start yours when it's your time. I, you know, I don't want you to work for me for 20, 30 years. I want you to you know, move on and improve. So I don't mind doing that, but I need to know. Because truth is, like I said, I need to be able to save you from yourself. So I'm not going to put you in a situation where you tempt yourself. You're not going to put a bartender, you know, and an alcoholic as a bartender and say, well, I'm not going to drink because I'm, you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic. No. So I will save you <laughs> from, you know, getting fired. Yeah. And just, you know, honesty. So I'll groom you and help you. But I can't do that at my expense. Yeah. So I think at the point of the interview, at your onboarding, you need to, you need to mm -hmm. say it. You need to tell me. Um, and I'll never ask you. All right. We'll just have a conversation around. Do you have something to tell me? Like, do you have a question for me? And it has to come up. Now, if it doesn't come up then, then it comes up like three weeks into the job, there's a problem. Because you need to tell me. It's not something that you're hiding. If I'm not told, then, uh, then it becomes, it's funny. But if, if, I, if I didn't know, then it becomes a crime. Yeah. But if I knew, and I said it's okay, then it's okay. Right. Especially when it's completely distant. Like the guy who makes, uh, one of my employees makes clothes for men. In fact, another one makes clothes for women. <laughs> so uh, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I could even patronize you, him. You find, you, find that, you find that a little, I don't want to use the word weird, but I mean, people who have side hustles who are completely off of their <laughs> path. Do you think that's normal? Do you think it's okay? It's not normal. Because they really have no interest in working for you mm -hmm. for the long term. And as an employer, you're spending money training your staff. So you also have to take that into consideration. So part of the onboarding process is what, what do you want to be? Like in five years, where do you see yourself? If you say, I see myself in three years being a CEO, then that means you're probably going to be with me for like six months to a year. I can't invest money in training you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if you have a plan, and I know, okay, this is just a job to get by, but there is a certain level of interest, and that's fine. So like guys you talk about now who make clothes, what do you tell them? Do you, do you keep them? Or do you, do you think the, the clothes making or designing is sort of just a, a passion and it's actually the career path they want to go down? So, what so, do you tell someone like that? So to certain extent, I'll agree with Blondie. Um, however, you know, I'm kind of impressed that they were not sitting at home waiting around for a job to come by and they started something. So I think I like that part. Um, it, it, so, some people just start out these things because they're trying to make money, and that's the information that reached them at the time. Not necessarily as if that is what they have found to be what they're passionate about. Most people under the age of 25 don't even know what they're passionate about. They don't know what they really want to do. So the, way, the same way they're coming to your office to find purpose, the same way they're doing that thing to find purpose, who knows they may find purpose with you as against that side hustle. So yeah. I, I still give them the opportunity to grow onto such a time. Is there a cut-off age for side hustles? <laughs> <laughs> 25. <laughs> really? So if you're 27 and you are doing more than 30 things. No, let me say 30. <laughs> <laughs> because by 30, you should definitely know what you're doing with your life. I think. You think it's that easy? I think. It's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a cut-off age you don't think so? I, uh, I don't think so. I think as long as you need more money, you'll find something to do. On the side. Oh, on the side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, good luck to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I hope uh, we, we figure things out earlier. And um, I mean, I still have some side hustles, and I'm over 30. So. <laughs> 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 but yeah, side hustles around what, what I do, so do. it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you didn't throw shit at me. <laughs> it's feeling bad now. <laughs> thank you very much, Brian. Thank, thank you very you. much, Blondie, for being here yeah. today. We're going to take a break and talk entertainment. Please stay with us. <laughs> 